Shares of Luck and Coffee have fallen massively since the company disclosed last week an internal investigation that found its COO had fabricated sales. This comes as no surprise to our next guest. He's announced a short position against Luck and did that back in January. Now he's here with another short against another company. Joining us is noted short seller Carson Block, founder and CIO at Muddy Waters Capital. Good morning to you, Carson. Thanks for joining us. Uh, want to talk about the luck and experience. Also want to talk about your support uh, for uh, another short that was announced yesterday. But uh, I gather you have a new short that you've put on and that you're willing to disclose this morning. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, it's a short that, I mean, we think should be down significantly. Um, it's a U.S. company. It's eHealth. And eHealth, e -health. while okay. not a fraud, eHealth, yes. eHealth is, in our view, a massive stock promotion. Um, it's a perfect storm of a new management that really wanted, in our view, to pump the stock. And a new accounting standard that really is perverse when applied to this business, but masks what is actually now a very unprofitable business and makes it look highly profitable. So this is explain the how they're where doing management's that. Kind of running around and sure. So there was a, uh, a new standard that went into effect um, as of 2018 that really was intended for software companies that have recurring license revenue. So these guys are insurance brokers, mostly in the Medicare space. And what they started doing is they said, okay, we sell a Medicare Advantage policy. We're just going to book three years of revenue up front. And, what, and so the key is, though, there are assumptions that go into how they book or what they book as revenue. It's, it's mark-to-model accounting, literally. I mean, that's, and we see this blow companies up all the time. So they booked last year $500 million in revenue, you know, off based on their highly aggressive assumptions that we don't think are realistic, I mean, we adjust that down by about 128 million or 25 percent. But more egregiously, it looks like they're very profitable. They reported about 100 million in operating profit, but we think that they actually really lost about 181 million on an operating basis. That's what our adjustment is. And the tell is cash. They incinerate cash. Now, they, they say, well, you know, we're, we're investing for growth. But the problem is once that accounting standard went into effect, they changed the business and started doing those late-night TV ads, you know, side-by-side -side with mesothelioma lawyer ads. And they get in a very low-quality, high-churn group of enrollees. So they base their model off of what was kind of a steady-state business, higher quality, stickier enrollees, but now they're jamming into the pipeline these enrollees that churn quite quickly, and they're basically booking all of that theoretical revenue today. And that is, that's the crux of the, of the problem, and that's why these guys are out there raising money and also why management's out there dumping stock. Carson, what has the company said specifically about this issue of churn, which seems to be the linchpin of the argument you're making against the company? Well, so they actually mislead on the churn. So when you look at, when you compare churn in 2017, uh, which was managed, the new management's first full year running the company, it's kind of like they slow walked the business that you're, you know, I suspect deliberately in order to really, you know, in, in order to basically game the test, so to speak, or game the model. And then that churn now went from 30, sorry, went from 37% in, 20, in 2017 to 47% last year. Now, we, we put our calculations of churn into our report. It's very straightforward. It's very basic. When they present churn, they use an aggressively small numerator and a misleadingly large denominator to say, oh, well, you know, churn is actually, you know, only uh, 30, you know, 6% or so. So that's the way right. that they're, they're pulling the wool over investors' eyes with respect to just the, the delta in quality. But it's clear when you use a, you know, a, a basic means of calculating churn that the profile of, your, of the 2018 and 2019 cohorts 
is very different from that of the 2017 cohort. Right. Carson, real, real quick, uh, the, the stock, as you've spoken, has dropped precipitously, about 15 percent down. We should also note CNBC has reached out to eHealth for a comment. And, of course, we'll bring it to you uh, when we get one. Uh, what do you think this company is worth? I mean, we think it's, you know, back of the envelope, you know, worth about 20 bucks. I mean, it, you know, the, the problem is this, this is not sustainable. I mean, you cannot keep running a business that is destroying value. I mean, we, look, we estimate that on every Medicare Advantage enrollee uh, last right. year, they lost about, they lost about $400. And they say that, you know, whereas they, they think or they're reporting a profit, you know, positive profit of a few hundred dollars. I mean, you can't, you know, if you keep doing right. that and you lose capital markets access, right. that's it. Carson, real quick, because we have literally 20 seconds. At the beginning of the conversation, you said this was not a fraud, and I just want to be clear about that. Do you think this is a fraud then? Or do you think these are just aggressive assumptions? This is what— We've got 10 seconds. Well, it, from a legal, legal perspective, it's not a fraud. Intellectually, it's fraudulent. Legally, it's, they have the latitude and the standard to do this stuff. That's the problem right. with market model accounting. 